In the upper realm, one of the gods made a mistake and killed off our poor Joe by the name of Kelvin Celsius in an accident. To make up for this mess, the goddess of reincarnation offered Kelvin the ability to choose the skills he wanted to be reincarnated with. After that, he would lose all his previous memories and be sent to a fantasy world to live his new life. Kelvin wakes up under a tree and wonders where the heck he is. But before he can move around, a game like window pops up in front of him. It reads, begin your adventure. He presses start to continue and the window suddenly starts moving around and starts speaking. It tells him about his reincarnation and how to check his stats. He opens up his stats screen and finds out that he has chosen the skill set for a dedicated support type player with S rank summoning spells and XP boosting traits. After that, just like every other Isekai reincarnation anime, the menu suggests that he might want to go and register with the Adventurers Guild in the nearby town. Happy with his skill set, he excitedly agrees and starts walking towards the Adventurers Guild. On his way, he talks to the menu screen and asks her if she would be following him as well. The menu tells him that she is actually the goddess of reincarnation called Melfina, and tells him that the pre-reincarnated Kelvin had actually fallen in love with her, and asked Melfina to be his servant in this life, and she accepted his request as a way to take a vacation from her job, so now he must take responsibility for her. He asks Melfina if he can summon her real body as well. She tells him that right now he doesn't have enough MP and he must train and grow stronger before he is able to summon her. She tells him that she would be looking forward to hearing him confess his love for her again when he is able to summon her real body. Kelvin thinks to himself that Melfina must be really hot for him to say all that to her in his previous life before the reincarnation. He then walks into the guild and registers as a basic green mage, which is one of the F-rank skills that he has. Melfina warns him that he should conceal his identity as a summoner because they are so rare that kingdoms would even wage wars to acquire his skills. The registrar at the guild takes his form and brings him his adventurer's pass. She introduces herself as Ange and then explains about different rankings in the guild. Kelvin is a beginner who is starting at the bottom at rank F. He can take missions up to one rank higher than his own and after completing 10 missions he will rank up. After rank C, he must take exams to rank up further. After hearing her explanation, Kelvin asks her if she has any suggestions for his first mission. Ange offers him three missions. After consulting with Melfina, Kelvin chooses the one where he has to defeat three blue slimes. He then goes to a weapon shop and buys a basic magic wooden rod. After that, he heads to the fields to hunt down blue slimes. He soon finds a group of blue slimes and hides behind a bush. Melfina tells him to use his S-rank skill appraising eye to see the stats and skills of the slimes. With this skill, he can appraise creatures up to 100 levels above him and items up to S-rank. He then asks Melfina how he can make a contract with the slimes as a summoner. She tells him that he would need their consent. But for weaker creatures he can just play Pokémon by weakening them and catching them all. After hearing that, he jumps out of the brush and tries to ambush the slimes but gets outplayed like a noob and knocked down by a slime. He tries to auto-attack while standing still but that works just as well as one might expect. But soon he realizes that he must play smart if he wants to reach gold and manages to land a heavy hit by aiming for the moment when the slime will dodge his first attack. After lowering its HP, he extends his hand to form a contract with the slime. The slime agrees and the contract drains half of Kelvin's MP. Despite all that, he succeeds in capturing his first Pokémon I mean slime and names it Clotho. He then summons Clotho and makes the poor slime become a cannibal by fighting and eating its brethren. Not really, Clotho is a savage battle junkie himself who loves to fight and grow. Kelvin and Clotho go on to defeat three blue slimes to complete their first mission. Kelvin takes down one slime with the Wind Blade magic spell, and Clotho takes down two slimes with sheer speed and a hard tackle. Kelvin notices that Clotho is much stronger than he was before making the contract with him. Melfina tells him that this is due to his rare S-rank summoner skill, which adds 100 points to all the stats of his summons. She further reveals that currently he is the only S-rank summoner in this world and the others are rank B or C which only adds up to 10 to 20 points to their summon stats. After completing his mission, he heads back to the town to claim his reward money and starts looking for an inn to dine and stay the night. On his way back, he comes across a slave trader with a few slave girls locked up in cages. Kelvin wonders that it would be a good way to level up by making a slave join his party and sharing XP with them. However, he doesn't think about it any further and walks off towards the spirit song in recommended by Ange from the Adventurer's Guild. At the inn, he introduces himself to the owner of the inn, Claire, and enjoys his first real meal in this new world. He then books a room for the night and calls it a day. After this, Kelvin spent his days taking up missions from the guild and leveling up his stats. Due to his growth enhancement skills he gathers up over 100 skill points in a short amount of time. He learns the concealment skill to hide his stats from prying eyes and plans to keep leveling this skill up to protect his identity. Clotho also learned new skills and even evolved into a gigantic Glutenia slime. 
One day, after completing his mission, he reports back to the guild and is congratulated by Ange. She tells him that he has ranked up to become an E-rank adventurer and now he can take up to D-rank missions. She then suggests him to get new gear for himself as he has been using the same beginner's staff that he got for his first mission. Kelvin has been doing his missions alone without joining a party and ranking up really fast for a beginner. This attracts lots of rumors and jealousy towards him from other adventurers in the guild. One such adventurer is Cashel, who is a D-rank adventurer said to be as strong as a B-rank. He is said to be the strongest in the guild as well. Cashel approaches Kelvin and invites him to join his party to take down a Black Ghost Knight. Kelvin uses his appraising eye skill to find out that Cashel's title is murderer, and this disturbs him. He understands that this is a trap but he feels confident in his abilities and so decides to walk into the trap. He instead challenges Cashel to see who defeats the Black Ghost Knight first. He then goes on to buy new gear and heads for the Black Ghost Knight's castle. He defeats all the undead soldiers alone and prepares some trap spells for Cashel and his group and waits. Soon Cashel arrives with his party consisting of two guys named Gimel and Raj, both of whom have a bounty on their heads. He provokes them into revealing their original plan to kill Kelvin and then engages them into a battle. First he entraps Raj into a concealed mud vine trap and then hits him with wind blades. Watching this Gimel decides to escape and runs back. Kelvin summons Clotho to stop him from escaping. Clotho chases after Gimel and one-shots him with a tentacle slap. It then goes on to capture Raj and defeat him as well. Meanwhile, Cashel starts running towards Kelvin to fight him but gets his ass handed to him as well. After dealing with Cashel's group, Kelvin walks into the castle's main room to fight the Black Ghost Knight. Turns out, the Black Ghost Knight is a pretty chill old dude who was once the captain of the Knight's Guard in his country. After his country fell, he had some grudges which led him to become a monster after his death. Kelvin sits down with Gerard the Black Ghost Knight and they have a nice long chat. Kelvin uses his appraising eye on Gerard and finds out that he is a level 52 named knight with a ton of high rank skills and stats. He asks Gerard to form a contract with him and serve him as his summon. Gerard agrees to the terms on the condition that Kelvin proves his strength. After that, they both get up and engage in a fight. Kelvin uses many restrictive spells to pin Gerard down for Clotho to finish him. But Gerard is too strong and experienced as a fighter and easily manages to dodge and block all of their attacks and even counter-attack them. They keep trading such blows until Gerard feels like he might lose and this awakens his sleeping memories from his previous life. He remembers that an elf named Jeldora was the one who destroyed his kingdom and led to his family's demise as well. He became a monster in order to take revenge from Jeldora. He asks Kelvin if you will help him take his revenge and unleashes a strong slash attack. Kelvin responds to Gerard's request with respect and uses all his power to pin him down using air pressure, and lets Clotho defeat Gerard with an energy beam attack. After that, Kelvin goes back to the guild and shows a fragment of Gerard's armor as proof of completing his mission and defeating the Black Ghost Knight. The guild offers him a gift of a special rank up because they deem this mission to be harder than a normal D-rank mission. With this, Kelvin has now become a D-rank adventurer. Meanwhile, Cashel and his party members were captured and thrown into a cell. The guard tells them to think about their deeds and to expect a death penalty. On the other hand, after finishing his business with Ange, Kelvin starts walking around the guild. We get to see that Gerard has now joined his side as one of his summons and is talking to him alongside Melfina and Clotho in Kelvin's mind. While walking, Kelvin runs into Leo, who is the guild master of the Parth Adventurer's Guild. Leo asks Kelvin if he is from another world and then uses his appraising eye to see Kelvin's stats. Kelvin realizes that Leo's appraising eye is higher rank than his concealment skill and he won't be able to hide his identity from him. Later, they both sit down in the guild master's office and have a discussion. Leo tells Kelvin that he has met others from other worlds before as well like the heroes of Duramis. He says that the head priestess of the kingdom of Duramis has oracled that the demon king is about to be revived. In this case, he wishes to become friends with Kelvin who is a high-ranked summoner, and an otherworlder like the previous heroes. He asks Kelvin to protect the town in his stead and in return he will help him rank up faster. Kevlin agrees and becomes friends with Leo. After that, he goes back to the inn. Claire congratulates him for getting promoted to a rank B adventurer and offers him lunch. He takes his sandwiches to his room and asks Malfina about the heroes of Duramis. She tells him that one year ago she had reincarnated four people to become the heroes of the kingdom of Duramis. She had chosen them based on their good looks and knowledge. After hearing this, Calvin summons Clotho whom he has been using as a storage unit due to his gluttonous ability. He takes out his bag of money and heads out. On his way, he tells Gerard that he is going to the slave market to buy one. He wants to add them to his party to reinforce his rear guard. When he reaches the slave market he spots the young elf girl that he saw the other day. The slave owner explains that no one wants her because she is cursed and will set anyone who touches her on fire. Kelvin uses his appraising eye skill to confirm that she is cursed by the fire dragon king. 
Kelvin asks Malfina about the curse and how to break it. She tells him that there is only one way to do that and that is to cast the high-ranked white magic, Sacred Bless. After hearing this, Kelvin walks off to level up and get that skill. He uses all his remaining skill points to acquire rank a Sacred Bless and then returns to purchase the cursed elf. The elf reveals her name as Ethel and Kelvin introduces himself to her as well. He then breaks her curse and tells her to join his party. Ethel thanks Kelvin and starts crying for breaking her curse and being kind to her. After that, they both walk back to the inn and Claire takes Ethel in and dresses her up. Kelvin helps Ethel with allocating her skill points while also telling her to make her own choices so she can grow as an adventurer as well. Kelvin asks Claire for another room or a separate bed for Ethel but she says that they don't have any rooms free so Kelvin must share a bed with Ethel. At night, Kelvin finds Ethel beautiful but can't sleep at all. Just like that one month passes by and Kelvin keeps doing his regular missions while taking Ethel with him. After one month, Ethel has now grown a lot as an adventurer and has developed her own unique fighting style by combining archery and the Fire Dragon King's blessing. She also learned sewing skill which allows her to mend and enhance her outfits. Kelvin also levels up a lot and invests some of his points into the blacksmith skill. Ethel has also become good friends with Ange. Back at the guild, Ange tells her about a new place to eat cakes and invites them to go together. Next day, Kelvin is surprised to see Ethel in casual clothes and compliments her. Melfina took off for a day to give a divine oracle to the priestess of the kingdom of Duramis. After that, they order lots of cakes and enjoy their small date. Meanwhile the third prince of Trison, Tabura is in the area and he gets jealous from seeing Kelvin enjoying his date with two beautiful girls. Tabura's guard kicks their table away and tells Kelvin to kneel before the prince. The prince orders his guards to capture the two girls as well because he liked them. Kelvin walks forward and quickly one-shots both guards like the NPCs they were and makes Tabura kneel using his air pressure skill. He asks Tabura about his business who reveals that because he is a failure he has no place in the royal family. So he has come to Parth after hearing rumors of a strong adventurer. He wishes to hire him so he can improve his standing. Kelvin reveals that he is the strong adventurer he is looking for and then declines his request. After that, he goes back with Ange and Ethel and resumes his cake date. Meanwhile, Malfina tells the priestess of Duramis to order the four heroes to go to the western continent but to stay away from Parth. At night, Ethel confesses her love for Kelvin and thanks him for everything that he has done for her. Kelvin becomes flustered and tries to comfort her. He finds her attractive but feels like he would be taking advantage of her because she is still a slave. He then thinks that he must buy a house so he can have a separate room for her. Next day, Melfina returns from Demaris and shares the stats of the heroes with Kelvin. They all agree that the hero's party is much weaker and underleveled than expected. All of them are around level 50 and Melfina worries if they would be able to grow strong enough in time for the Demon King's revival. Kelvin agrees and then boasts about improving his blacksmithing skill and shows his creations. Gerard teases him that he only reached there after failing a billion times and creating tons of garbage. Just then, Claire knocks on the door and tells him that the guild is calling for Kelvin. At the guild, Kelvin meets Leo who explains that a sealed demon was found in a secret room in the Rank D dungeon, Hermit's Hollow. It is yet to be evaluated but it could even be a Rank S mission but right now there is no one strong enough to go and check the dungeon. He then teases Kelvin that he heard some ruffian assaulted the third prince of Trison and it can even become an international incident. He is having so much trouble cleaning up after them. After that, he asks Kelvin if he would accept this mission and go check out the dungeon. Kelvin reluctantly accepts and internally calls Leo the real demon. Kelvin and his party enters the hermit's hollow and goes to the secret room to find the sealed demon. Alongside her, there is another demon who introduces himself as the archdemon, Victor. Victor tells Kelvin that the sealed demon is Sira, the daughter of the last demon king and her seal can only be broken by a human. He will make them break her seal and then consume her to absorb her powers and become the next demon king. After that, he engages them in a fierce battle. Kelvin feels super excited about facing a really strong enemy, and this makes him smile like a maniac. Melfina reveals that Kelvin is actually a hardcore battle junkie who loves fighting and facing strong opponents. Someone idealizes Goku for sure. Victor revives some of the undead soldiers and makes them attack Kelvin. But Gerard, Ethel and Clotho easily defeat the undead soldiers. Victor compliments their teamwork and then casts a shrouding spell to hide his presence. After that, he tries to sneak attack Kelvin but Kelvin manages to dodge him by sensing his magic. After that, Victor fights Gerard and overpowers him. He then keeps attacking Kelvin with one of his arms and finds an opportunity to go for his head. Kelvin calls forth Clotho and makes it attach to one of Victor's arms and suck his magic. Victor tries to attack with his other hand, but Kelvin seals it with his magic. Ethel uses this chance to fire a blazing arrow at Victor. Victor manages to block it with one of his arms but has to sacrifice it in doing so. Gerard uses this momentum to slash at Victor's other arm and cuts it off as well. Feeling cornered, Victor transforms into his battle form and charges towards Kelvin. 
Gerard blocks him and starts fighting him one on one. Ethel provides support by shooting lots of arrows at Victor. Kelvin summons Clotho and makes it rain all of his failed creations from his blacksmithing practice. After that, all three of them charge up their attacks and shoot them towards Victor and defeat him. The blast causes the ceiling to collapse over Syra. Victor rushes towards her and protects her by bodying a massive piece of broken ceiling. Victor falls on the ground and tells Kelvin that in reality he is Sira's only companion and teacher. When the previous demon king was attacked, he sealed Sira and put her in his care. Victor wanted to find humans who would be kind enough to be good to Sira and strong enough to protect her. He then requests Kelvin to let Sira join his party and make her see the outside world. Kelvin accepts his request and adds Sira to his party. After Sira wakes up she realizes the situation and cries a lot for Victor. Kelvin takes her out and reports her as one of the victims of Victor's attack. From their battle with Victor, Gerard evolves into an Abyssal Knight Commander which is a S-rank monster. Meanwhile, Sira feels afraid of her identity being revealed but Kelvin ensures her that no one would be able to find out about her due to his rank S concealment skill. After that they walk into the town and Sira enjoys traveling around and looking at all the shops for the first time in her life because she used to be a sheltered child. After their short escapade, Kelvin learns that he has been promoted to a rank A adventurer. The guild members hold a celebration party for him at the inn and he finds out that Claire is married to Erd, a fellow adventurer from the guild. Sira feels awkward in the crowd and thinks about Victor, but after reliving some memories she feels motivated to make the most out of the life Victor gave her. Next day, Kelvin makes a new demonic sword for Gerard and a pair of gauntlets from Victor's armor for Sira. After that, he feels tired and craves for some rice, but Ethel doesn't know what that is, so they travel to the coastal city of Toraj where rice can be found in this world. On their way, their cart is ambushed by a band of thieves called the Black Wind. Kelvin checks their stats and finds out that they are all around level 30. He then tells Sira to go out and take care of them all as practice. Sira easily defeats all the bandits and ties them up. The leader of the group tells them about their boss who is level 70. This intrigues Kelvin and he decides to make a detour to meet the bandit's boss. After that, they reach the city of Toraj and Sira looks at the ocean. She remembers her promise with Victor about him teaching her how to swim. Kelvin promises her that he will teach her but first they must head to the guild to turn in the bandits. At the Torridge Adventurer's Guild, they meet the guildmaster, Mist. She used to be a party member with Leo back in her young days and has heard all about Kelvin from him. Kelvin shares the information about the boss of the Black Wind with her and tells her that he is the champion of Trison, Kristoff. Kristoff was sent by Trison to expand the slave trading business but the guild don't have any solid proof against him. Kelvin feels the presence of the heroes of Duramis in the city and suggests that Mist requests them to take care of Kristoff. Acting on this suggestion, Mist asks the heroes to investigate and capture the slave traders. The brave-hearted knight hero, Toya accepts the request. Meanwhile, Kelvin has plans of his own. He heads to the bandit's base and defeats Kristoff and all of his lieutenants. After that, he sits in the boss room and pretends to be the main villain. The hero's party arrives at the slave trader's base and rushes in to protect the slaves. But they find out that they have all been already saved and Clotho is there. One of the heroes is a summoner and is able to communicate with Clotho who tells her that he was left there to protect the slaves. After that, the slaves ask the heroes to go forward and help the adventurer who saved them. The hero's party enters the boss room and find Cherstoff and his lieutenants on the ground. They mistake them for the adventurer who saved the slaves and thinks that Kelvin is the real enemy. Kelvin plays along and challenges the four heroes, Toya, Setsuna, Mizoka, and Miyabi to a 1 vs 4 battle, and the loser will have to do whatever the winner says. While the heroes group up to discuss their plan, Kelvin reveals that he wanted the hero's involvement so he could use their influence to justify Kristoff's capture. Gerard teases that in reality he just wanted a reason to fight the heroes and that's why he is playing the villain right now. Kelvin agrees and says that he wants to test his new equipment, skill eater as well as test his limits without any teammates. After that, Kelvin and the heroes prepare for their battle. The heroes party casts enhancement spells to boost their stats revealing their elements as fire, water, wind and darkness. Toya charges towards Kelvin but Kelvin shoots a couple of radiance lances towards him and Setsuna. After that, Kelvin rushes in towards Mizoka to attack her, but she reveals a baby dragon hiding inside her backpack and shoots a flame breath towards him. Kelvin uses Sonic Accelerate to swiftly dodge her attack. Kelvin uses this momentum to ambush Miyabi and uses his skill eater to copy her unique skill parallel thinking. He can store up to one skill at a time in each of his skill eater gloves. 
Toya rushes in and engages with Kelvin one-on-one -on -one while the rest of them focus on healing Miyabi. Even though Toya is a high-ranked swordsman, Kelvin overwhelms him with his rank S martial arts that he copied from Sira. Setsuna rushes to help Toya but Kelvin jumps back and casts Adamantite Rampart to enact a gigantic earth wall. Setsuna uses her unique skill to cut it down but Kelvin has already prepared a strong fireball spell and launches it towards her. Toya rushes in to block it and protects Setsuna. After that he gets frustrated over his weakness and says that he must defeat Kelvin or else he won't be able to defeat the Demon King. Seeing him take all the responsibility over himself all alone, Setsuna slaps Toya and gives him the anime protagonist lecture about teamwork and relying on others. After that Toya agrees and apologizes for his selfish actions and they resume their fight with Kelvin as a team. They use light fairy magic to blind Kelvin and then freezes the ground to keep him from moving. Miyabi further enhances the trap by using gravity magic to pin him down. Setsuna and Toya use this chance to charge towards him and attack but Kelvin uses cleft detonation and knocks them all away. After that he uses blind cure to restore his vision and commends them on their teamwork. He then starts lecturing them about their lack of combos and battle knowledge and gives them tips for better combat tactics. All of them feel taunted and start fighting him more seriously. Toya reveals his dual wielding and charges towards Kelvin while the casters use enhancing spells on Toya and debuffs on Kelvin while supporting Toya with attack spells as well. Nizoka uses her strongest spell, Frozen Temple to strangle Kelvin while Miyabi summons her strongest monster to finish the job. Kelvin summons Earth Golems and asks them to buy him 30 seconds and uses the parallel mind skill that he borrowed from Miyabi to create a new spell. Miyabi warns her friends about the new skill and Setsuna jumps in to defeat Kelvin. But Kelvin uses his new spell to free himself and knocks Setsuna down with a fast punch to her stomach. He then defeats Miyabi and her summon and knocks Mizoka and her dragon down as well. Watching his friends fall, Toya becomes angry and unleashes a mindless barrage of slashes towards Kelvin like a noob. But Kelvin shows him who's the boss and knocks him out with a single uppercut. Toya opens his eyes and finds out that Kelvin was the adventurer who saves the slaves all along. He then calls Kelvin his master because he helped them train. Kelvin reminds them about their challenge and tells them all to strip naked as punishment. After that, Kelvin takes the heroes to a sea cave to fight an octopus-like monster. The hero's party has a difficult time defeating it and this makes them realize that they must work harder and grow stronger if they want to have a chance at defeating the Demon King. He then goes on to defeat the S-rank boss monster of the sea cave. After that, they say their goodbyes to Kelvin and sail away for the western continent. While seeing them off, Kelvin asks Gerard about the Lysia Empire of Elves that destroyed his country. He then asks if they picked a fight against them right now, would they be able to win? Gerard feels grateful that Kelvin remembered. Gerard says that at first he had no hope but now they have grown much stronger and they might actually have a chance. Kelvin says that they would do it but first let's defeat more strong monsters on this continent and grow even stronger and Gerard agrees. Just then, Sira interrupts and says that they are being summoned by the Queen of Torach. Kelvin and the party arrive at the castle and notice that it looks like a Japanese castle. Gerard mentions that the first king of Toraj was an otherworlder and that explains this influence. Kelvin enters the castle with his party and notices Japanese-inspired infrastructure and attire of the queen. The queen thanks him for defeating the boss of the sea cave as well as for dealing with Kristoff and the Black Mist. She then asks him what kind of reward he wants and Kelvin just asks for rice. The queen is amused by his request and offers him a lifetime supply of free rice and then they have a delicious banquet. After that the queen invites them to stay at the castle and during this time, Ethel has mastered all forms of Japanese cooking and brings Kelvin his lunch. The queen of Torridge joins him and tells him that Ethel makes some of the best food she has ever had. She then asks him to let her borrow Ethel but Kelvin refuses. She then asks him if he would like to stay here forever and be her personal guard but Kelvin refuses that as well and says it's time for him to leave. The queen lets them use the teleportation gate to go back to Parth. Back in the city, Kelvin buys a massive house for the party and even hires two of the slaves he rescued in Toraj, Ellie and her daughter Luca. At night, Kelvin feels alone in his bed. Just then Melfina comes back and notifies him that he can now summon her. Kelvin summons her and Melfina arrives in her angelic body. Kelvin thinks how beautiful she is and understands why he fell in love with her pre-reincarnation. Next day, Melfina introduces herself to the rest of the party in person. She makes Kelvin blush by calling her his first wife and then gives him the blessing of the goddess of reincarnation as a gift for summoning her. The blessing grants him two special perks. Number one is that once a month, it will prevent damage from one ability that might otherwise prove fatal. The second perk is that he can now summon heroes. Kelvin thinks about what it means to summon a hero and how it can affect the other person's life because he himself was reincarnated from another world. Meanwhile, Sira and Melfina have a serious sparring match where they fight for the right to sleep next to Kelvin. 
Their match ends in a tie as Gerard and Luca watch from the sidelines. After their match, Melfina surprises Kelvin with some chocolate and they sit down to talk. Kelvin asks Melfina why heroes are needed in this world. Melfina explains that every Demon King has two perks. One of them is that they can drive anyone crazy and the other is that they are invulnerable to all damage. But because heroes are from another world, they are an exception to this rule and can defeat the Demon King. Melfina tells Kelvin that if he is unsure about summoning someone, the only way for him to get over it is by practicing a reincarnation summoning. She then explains that there are two ways to summon someone, one is via teleporting a living person, and the other is by reincarnating a dead person. After this, Kelvin performs a reincarnation summon and summons Rio, a young girl from Earth. Kelvin wonders if she is actually strong but Melfina ensures him that she is the best. After talking to Rio for a little while both Rio and Kelvin fall unconscious due to lack of MP. After taking proper rest, they both wake up at night and talk about their experiences. We find out that Rio was a patient of a terminal illness in her previous life and is really grateful for Kelvin to have given her another chance at life. Kelvin tells her that people with black hair are rare in this world and she should pretend to be her younger sister. Rio likes this idea and agrees. While they are at it, Kelvin also asks Rio to change her name because it reminds him of Leo, the Grandmaster of the Adventurer's Guild. Rio agrees and changes her name to Rion. Later that night, Kelvin wakes up to find out that Sira, Rion and Melfina have snuck inside his bed. He takes a moment to reflect on his new life and sleeps again happily. Next day, Kelvin takes Ellie and Luca with him to the dark purple forest to hunt some monsters. When Ellie asks, he explains that he has a XP sharing skill and they will level up alongside him as the party members slay monsters. This is for their own safety so they can protect themselves in case of emergency. They also encounter a dark wolf that Kelvin subdues and adopts as a pet for Rion. Rion names him Alex. During this XP grinding picnic, Erd's party meets Kelvin and tells them that they are there to slay some monsters for their B-rank promotion exam. Ethel explains that Sira and Gerard have already slain all the monsters in the area, and Kelvin ends up apologizing to Erd. Erd tells him not to worry and exclaims that it is amazing how strong Kelvin has become and that he will soon be taking his S-rank promotion exam. Kelvin didn't know that Leo had put him up for S-rank exams. Over the next few days, Rion levels up alongside Alex with Kelvin and his party. One night, Kelvin notices intruders around his house. The intruders are low-level companions of Kristoff who are seeking revenge against Kelvin. Kelvin sends Rion to deal with them and gives her a resonating mithril sword. He also shares his far-seeing skill that he copied from Ethel with Rion and sends her off. Rion fights and defeats all the intruders while Kelvin and Sira watch from inside. After Rion finishes her job, Sira goes to congratulate her. Meanwhile, Kelvin confronts the leader of the intruders and captures him. On the other hand, in the kingdom of Trison, the Emperor Zell holds a round table meeting with his generals, Prince Asgard, Tristan, Dan, and Princess Shatola. The operation to capture slaves in Torads was under Tristan's orders and the Emperor shows disappointment in him as this matter can lead to an international mess for Trison. They discuss the political unrest between their neighboring kingdoms, Toradj, Duramis, and Guan, which are forming an alliance against Trison. Tristan suggests that they go to war and unify the continent as they have planned. Princess Shatola agrees but says that the alliance is not to be taken lightly but Prince Asgard says that they can defeat them easily using the ace up their sleeves. With Dan and Princess Shatola against going to war and Tristana and D. Asgard in favor of it, Emperor Zell suggests that now it's up to the fifth general, Clive to make the decision. A soldier is sent to notify Clive. It is revealed that Clive is a womanizer who only stations women as his guards and likes to play with them. Meanwhile, Leo informs Kelvin about the increasing tension at the borders among the Alliance and Trison and offers an S-rank mission to Kelvin as his promotion exam to become an S-rank adventurer. It is a special request from the King of Guan to defeat an S-rank monster near an elven village. On their way, they are stopped by some elves. Kelvin shows them the letter from the King of Gaon and explains that he is an adventurer who is there to defeat the monster threatening the locals. The chief of the village appears and introduces himself as Nellis. He apologizes to Kelvin for the run reception and takes him to the village. At first when he sees Ethel, he mistakes her for his deceased daughter but then realizes that it's not true. He tells them about his daughter who became the bride of a dragon to save the village. But sometime later she was found dead in the forest. Fearing that the dragon might come for revenge they fled the kingdom of Gaon. Sira and Gerard suggest that it could be that Ethel is the daughter of the dragon and the chief's daughter, but Melfina clarifies that Ethel's father must be a human and not a dragon. Regardless of whom her parents were, Ethel shows gratitude for her new family that she has right now. Getting back to the topic of the mission, the chief explains that they have been attacked by monsters over three times already, and they are kidnapping elves. From his experience, Kelvin finds it hard to believe that monsters would kidnap someone. 
he comes up with a plan to capture the culprits and surrounds the whole village by a wall of earth. At night, Trison's soldiers lead a group of monsters and march towards the elven village. Soon they are shot down one by one by Ethel but they don't know where the arrows are coming from. One of the soldiers reports back to his commander and tells him that their forces are being defeated by unknown adventurers. Melfina and Rion follow him and find the enemy's base. The commander summons his strongest monster to attack them. Melfina gives Rion an opportunity to test and prove her skills and show them how far she has come. Rion feels determined and fights the monster alongside Alex. She climbs up the monster and strikes her head but her sword breaks apart. The monster throws her back but she is determined. She tells Clotho to give him stronger weapons and then uses three sword style to defeat the monster. Seeing that he would be defeated, the commander orders the monster to transform and unleash its true forms. Rion finds it challenging but eventually defeats the monster anyways. She then comes back to Melfina and hugs her celebrating her victory. Kelvin and Ethel watch over Rion and her victory from afar and commends her growth. Just then a strong blast of energy comes towards Kelvin but he blocks it with his magic. It is revealed that it was General Clive who launched that attack and Kelvin starts smiling, recognizing him as a strong opponent. Clive takes a liking to Ethel and uses his unique skill to charm her into becoming his slave. But Kelvin interrupts him with an attack and tells Ethel to go inside the wall. He uses his appraising eye to reveal that Clive is a reincarnation just like himself and starts fighting him alone. Kelvin uses his magic to transform the tower into four obsidian lances. He then launches them towards Clive but he deflects them easily with his barrier. Clive's guards start attacking Kelvin. Kelvin notices that all of them have been hypnotized using Clive's unique skill. While Clive boasts about getting Kelvin outnumbered, his barrier is pierced by a blazing arrow from Ethel. Kelvin uses this chance to summon four golems and equips them with obsidian lances and sends them off to deal with Clive's knights. After that, Clive summons his staff and they both engage in an airborne energy shooting battle. Clive chases after Kelvin while he dodges all his attacks. He notices that Clive's energy beams might hit his own knights and warns Clive. But Clive is arrogant and doesn't care and says that he can do whatever he wants. This makes Kelvin angry and they both charge towards each other with strong spells. From the clash, Kelvin's staff breaks and Clive gets a scar on his face. Like a narcissist, Clive becomes really angry about the scar on his face and swears to kill Kelvin. He charges up his strongest spell and gathers up all the energy around his staff. A powerful storm of energy starts forming around Clive which sucks everything inside and destroys it. With no other choice, Kelvin takes out his new staff, the S-rank Black Disaster and transforms it into a scythe. He then charges in towards Clive and cuts right through his spell as well as his legs. Clive falls on the ground with tears in his eye and as soon as Kelvin goes in for the finishing blow, he is teleported and saved by Tristan who arrives on the scene. Tristan confirms that he is the one behind the attacks on the elven village and then vanishes into thin air with Clive. Kelvin feels disappointed with not being able to finish Clive but goes back to the ground to meet his teammates. Melfina, Ethel, Syra, and Rion have a race to see who will reach Kelvin first and Rion wins by using a special acceleration skill while riding Ailks. Kelvin praises her for defeating the giant monster and Gerard pets Alex as well. Meanwhile in the Trison castle, Tristan imprisons Clive and chains him down on a table and makes his servants repeatedly impale him with cursed swords and heal him back up as punishment for failing his job. He reveals that he will keep using him as a test subject for his weapons against the heroes and the reincarnated. Back at the elven village, everyone has a party to celebrate their victory against Trison. Kelvin wonders how lucky he is for this life and his companions. Just then Ethel comes and tells him that she feels grateful as well for Kelvin changing her life for the better. She then shows him a hair ornament that belonged to her mother and makes him put it on her hair. The rest of the party joins them and they celebrate together. Just then a young elf comes to Kelvin and reveals that he is actually the King of Guan who has used a special item to change his appearance. He had been watching over Kelvin as an observer for his S-rank promotion exam and now he has passed it. He then tells him that in four days they will be holding an official promotion ceremony where he will have mock battles against other S-rank adventurers. Hearing this, Kelvin starts smiling at the thought of getting to fight other strong opponents and everyone teases him for being a hardcore battle junkie. And this is where the season 1 of Black Summoner ends. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this and want to see more please make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel with notifications on so you never miss a future video. And until next time guys, take care.